to order at 7.02 and somebody have a flag. Oh, Kathy's saying, we, here's my flag. Great, so if you'll, you know, it's a little backwards, it's frontwards for everybody. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the Republic, the Republic for and which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, with liberty, justice, justice, for, all. justice for all. Thank you, everyone. So, um, public input, no public. And correspondence, nothing that's not part of everything we'll be discussing as part of our project tonight. Um, meeting minutes, which Kathy sent out in advance, so everybody has had a chance to look at those. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the regular meeting minutes from our meeting of October 26, 2021. Second that. Dave Olson seconds it. Does anybody see anything that needs to be corrected, updated, etc. in the minutes? I did not. And no one else did. So all in favor of approving the meeting minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Is anybody opposed? And does anybody need to abstain? This Roy need to abstain? No, John Perna. Yeah, right. John wasn't that. So John Perna needs to abstain. Okay. Great. Moving right along. Let's do our construction progress for our school projects. Do our construction progress uh, schedule update, which I guess is coming from Jim tonight. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Hi, Joe. So we can start over at, at Johnson. We'll be meeting with the uh, landscaper on Friday to review the seated areas. Um, unfortunately, I think that some of them have been cut again. So I do expect to get some sort of uh, letter of protest from him. But we will be meeting with him Friday to go over the areas that were indicated on the drawing, see if we're ready for a, a final inspection or an approval of those areas. He did replace the two trees over at Johnson. Uh, that soccer field was reseeded. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned, obviously, with the weather that we're getting now. So we'll see. We'll have to monitor that. But that is an earth movers item. Uh, and then obviously, we're just waiting for that column cover uh, up front there for to come in uh, so that can be replaced over at Johnson. Any questions on Johnson? Um, the the, um, the dumpster enclosure that got smacked by the garbage folks. That, I think we talked about that at the last meeting and that was gonna be replaced by the garbage people who ran into it. Is that true? That, yeah, we, haven't, we haven't taken any action on that. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So was that taken care of by the dumpster people, the garbage people? Yeah. Nancy, I, I'm a little confused. Uh, did you want a price quote on that, or is that something you just want? Uh, so, if the garbage people backed into the gate, should they be to replace it? Bob, I think it was when you were gone, and I probably was supposed to mention something to you. Okay. Um, but um, I believe it occurred when you were gone, and people saw it happen. Oh, okay. So, so shouldn't the dumpster, shouldn't the people, because they damaged it, replace it or fix it? Well, will they know how and what equipment to use or what parts to use? Um, can maybe Ken or Jim give us the company where this came from? So sure, we can Bob. do a little research sure. here. We can give you the contact information. We can explain to them what it is. And I'm sure that they could probably, even without seeing it, get you a quote for what it would be worth. Okay. Um, you know, since you mentioned it, it looks like Rockwell was hit as well. I saw that today. It looks a little cockeyed. You know, the, the door looks a little cockeyed. So not sure if, um, if, if that uh, driver hit that one too. Because I saw the, um, 
the Johnson one broken, and then I saw the Johnson one gone. So somebody, maybe one of your guys, Bob, yeah. you guys took it off. I I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Ryan may have uh, just made it safe. It's probably located right behind the dumpster. Yeah, or he wouldn't have thrown anything away. Right, it's probably leaning somewhere behind inside the enclosure somewhere. Okay, so um, um, Jim's going to get that info or Ken to uh, Bob so that um, you can follow up with your garbage guys. They may have already told somebody, but I don't know if you had record of um, whether it was um, what, what had happened and whether you had any kind of record of it being reported. I, I will I will dig into it tomorrow. I'll ask the garbage company. Maybe they maybe they um, you know written something down and sent it in. I'll I'll follow right. it up. Yeah, uh, Bob. Okay. I think Ryan might know something about it too. Yeah, I, I'll ask. Okay, I think I was supposed to tell you. I apologize. Not not a problem. I was not allowed to take vacations. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was already told that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Jim, back to the um, landscape, lawn areas, et cetera. I, I know that when the pr priority had said they were going to do the reseeding and then it wasn't supposed to be cut for how long of a period of time was it supposed to be? Priority was looking to do the cutting uh, within the next week. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm concerned, obviously, it looks like it's been cut, especially in front of uh, Johnson, where the addition is, looks like that was cut. Um, the slope over by the teacher parking looks like it was cut also. But he's, you know, he was scheduled to go out there this week to cut it. So I'm sure we'll get something out of him. We're going to walk with him on Friday. Um, we'll, we'll see what he's got. Was there, Bob, was there something that was obviously said to whoever does the cutting, don't cut it until we tell you to kind of thing? Yeah, yeah that, that's correct. But you got to keep in mind, I share that area with uh, Park and Rec as well. Right, right. And were they told not to cut it? I, I'm not sure, ma'am. But I know, no. excuse me, I know my grass cutter uh, wasn't touching it. And I, and I haven't seen any of his invoices uh, for those two right. schools. Okay, so you told the guy that you use not to cut the areas that you're responsible for, but we don't know if anybody told Park and Rec to stay away from it yes okay to my, to my knowledge yeah but on friday jim you're saying that you're going to walk it prayer to see if they think it's good when ready to be released to us Correct. we gotta bob i guess we're gonna have to check it too and um make sure that if there are, however many of us want to walk around in the grass and make sure it's acceptable okay Anybody have any other questions uh, for Jim on Johnson? And these few things that you have here, Jim, are pretty much the outstanding things that we've been either waiting on or working on. Correct. So this is okay. Jim's report, right? What's the scoop with the roof leaks? That's that's a different school, so we will talk about that when we get to Rockwell. Okay. So anything else for, um, for Johnson, for Jim? I mean, obviously, if a question pops in your mind, sure, ahead, you know, go ahead and ask it. But anybody have anything for um, Johnson? The, the, the only thing I have for Johnson is that um, we're noticing now uh, when we, we've had a long time now, we've been using the front entrance. Um, but during really bad weather, uh, rain and things like that, when they go up to the uh, push button on the front door where they can communicate into the school and then show their license and, and things like that to be vetted, uh, they're standing in pouring rain. Um, because of the way the roof design, there's a space in between where the roof ends and where the building begins. So uh, we may have to think about a small little uh, enclosure or a little doghouse over the top of this so a person a parent can walk up and talk through the intercom uh, without getting water coming off the roof at them so kind of a small design flaw there 
Is it pitched that way, Bob? Like so that well, there's nothing above it. Well, it's that I know, but um, it, it, even in the old Johnson, there was nothing there above the. I don't think. Is it? Is it? Is the water coming off the roof? Like well, well it's falling straight down, right from the sky. Because you look uh, straight up, you see the sky. So, it, if it's pouring out, they're actually standing in front of this. Uh, you know, the camera, and they're trying to to talk, push the button, and 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 they're getting drenched. So, I don't know. I gotta. I, we gotta look into that a little deeper, especially when it starts yeah. snowing now. So there's a um, there's a gap there, right, of, between where the building starts and where that little canopy kind of thing ends. That's correct. There's a gap. It, it goes the whole length of the building. You know, right. So, over. Joe Colada, is that the way it was designed? Yeah, there was a there was definitely a gap between the canopy and the existing facade of the building. Can we, we look? We can look. We can look at the location of the 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 push button. That's, uh, maybe that's, that's maybe that's something that just needs to be relocated. Um, but we can take a look at that. But it's also the, the air phone, right, Bob? It's the yes. air phone, the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all all that would have to be really relocated, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would. I don't know. I'm maybe I'm being too harsh, but I wouldn't go crazy on it. We have other locations. I think it was that way before. Yeah, there was no existing canopy at Johnson. Right. right. So, I mean, people would have to use an umbrella if it's pouring rain. So, so it's a kind of, did you have the same check-in situation too, where they had to yeah. get into a speaker and stand there and push the button? Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you, have to, you have to get your umbrella. <laughs> was it something that was problematic talked about as being problematic the old way i i, I don't I, think i don't so. remember any but i mean i i will say though in the last couple of years there it is poured at times <laughs> it really has i mean i i don't know if anybody else agrees with me but yeah, the rain yeah. the rain is definitely poured a lot harder but yeah. i think it's just hey you got to bring your umbrella so why don't we monitor it um yeah. When when somebody from Rizzo's up there, they can kind of check it out too. And if, but we if need it's to... a big deal, I wouldn't do too much. Right. But I think we can look at it and see are there other options, simple options. Um, maybe put umbrella a little umbrella stand there with umbrellas in it and people can grab the umbrella, little sign that says, take an umbrella. And leave umbrella. Put your raincoat on. <laughs> yeah. But well, but we should keep an eye on it if it does proved to be an issue. Well, I, I was looking at more mechanically. I, I'd rather, I don't want to see it shorted out or anything like that. So I does know. the equipment get wet then actually, the camera and everything else? Oh yeah, it's exposed. And I'm sure it's wet, I'm sure it's weatherproof to a point, um, but that speaker at some point is going to, it's going to get water in it. It definitely has a cover on it. Right, and it's made to be outside in the elements, I'm assuming. Yeah. So we can have Rizzo kind of check it out when they're up there and see what they think. Um, so Jim Rockwell? Sure. Um, so the, the water main cap is scheduled for the 11th. Um, again, we'll do the same meeting with uh, priority over at, at Rockwell that we have at Johnson. Um, that, that slope in the front, you see it's taken pretty well there, so that, that does look pretty good. There's some, some light fixtures for the media center that, that uh, have come in, we've been told, and, our, and the, the work is scheduled for the 11th, so that should resolve it, the, the lighting issue there. Um, we, we did meet with Earth Movers um, uh, going over the basketball court, um, and then Friday we'll meet with Priority. I expect them to give letters of protest and, and look to get paid for things, but that's, you know, we're basically directing them for the uh, Perkins letter. Um, the, the roof issue I had sent over, Dr. Carver, I don't know if you got it. Uh, we've gotten a marked up drawing kind of showing where the, the leaks were uh, in the areas that are, are under panels. So that would be the area we'd, we'd have to coordinate between the roofer and the panels uh, installer that, in order to get at those areas, we need to remove some of the panels. 
Jeez. I did forward it to Nancy and Geraldyn. Okay. And, yeah, I didn't you know, put it up if we want to talk about it. But. We we can coordinate that with the the panel installer. Uh, you know, set the roof for up the panel installer because they should both be there to uh, you know to fully understand what needs to be done to because I don't think they know the exact location of the repair. So there's going to be a little bit of investigation conversation and you know, nobody's going to be happy about having to remove panels. Hey, Jim, on that, with the panels, is that, was this leak? Do you think that this is caused by the panels or was it previous to the panels? No, I think it's pretty clear what we're looking at here is all panel related. Um, you you really? had a good period of time for that roof after that, the April finish where you were in good shape. Um, you have a couple of areas where you, you had some leaks come up, but these two areas specifically are not areas that you even had issues during construction and you're, you're right under the field of panels that you have on the, on the backside, the south side of the building. So how are we gonna take care of the warranty and what have you on this? How, what's your so, representation? So, so far, John Mansville's not being um, a stickler that their paperwork wasn't completed, that, that their procedures weren't followed. It sounds like they're willing to uh, work through this with you. They, you know, they're the ones that directed Youngs to get out there and fix, uh, address any of the other leaks on the building. So it doesn't sound like they're looking to, you know, put their hands in the air and say that this isn't their roof anymore. Um, so I haven't had any direct conversations yet with John Mendel, but I would intend to as we get set up for this, because again, I'm going to need them to push the roofer to come out and look at this area that's underneath the. the the solar panels there. Yeah. Hey Jim, hey Jim you uh, yes. one or two of your photos that you showed uh, looked like they were near the roof ladder itself. Um, what what's your thoughts on those? Um, if you're talking about down by the cafeteria and guidance, right, where you go from one roof level to yeah, the next that's the, that was the that was the ductwork looked like somebody had stepped on that, so the caulk pulled away from the building. Um, so that that um, the roofer took care of when he was out there. He reapplied the caulk to that area. Oh, so okay. that should that shouldn't be an issue. Um, it, it's really the that area that that nothing was done on is the area over the girl, the the girl's second floor toilet. And then that as you're looking at that drawing just to the right there, that area also nothing's been done with that because they haven't identified the exact location because that's under a, a good sized field of solar panels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So are the solar people, are they going to take them off at no charge or how is that all going to work out? Well, you know, certainly they didn't follow the, the Mansville procedures for their install. Uh, I don't know what the agreement was with them, what the contract with them says, but they certainly didn't follow those steps. So really? uh, I'm sure they're not going to be happy about what they have to do, but it's the only way you're going to resolve the problem. Uh, you know, it, the roofer can't remove the solar panels, so they're going to have right. to remove them so it can be investigated. Right. So, but, but if they're not put on to spec, I mean, we're going to have a problem, you know, an ongoing issue here. So what I'd, what I'd like to think we could do is kind of kill that with the conversations with John Mansville, because what it comes down to is right now, John Mansville has the warranty for this building on hold. Doesn't okay. mean they're walk, trying to walk away from it, but they want certain things done. Um, so I, I think if those things can be done, that you, you're, you're able to salvage the warranty and it's, it's not an issue going forward. Um, you know, it, it just this getting you want to get these leaks fixed now before this the, the weather gets much worse and, and you, you start to get more bad weather in the winter. Um, right. I just I don't see a simple way to do it other than kind of putting these two guys together and, and, and fighting it out. Yeah. I agree. I just want to make sure that John Manville is going to stand behind it. And if the solar people have this screwed up on us, then somehow, you know, we'll, we're going to have to get this resolved, you know, in total. So I, I don't know if this matters or not, but Chris, I, I just, I got an email today about it. Chris Baldwin inspected it. Oh, he's going to have a heart attack when he goes up there. Well, he, he gave them a passive inspection, right, Bob? I mean, did you get that email too? No, I didn't, ma'am. 
All right, I'm gonna, I'll forward it to Geraldine and you guys. Um, so, you know, I, I said to Jim, I, I, we need it fixed. So you're saying Chris Baldwin gave the solar installation a, a pass or a CO? Yes. Okay. I'm going to forward it. I'm going to forward it to you. I don't know why I got it, but I did. So I'm going to forward it all to you now. That has okay. nothing to do with that has nothing to do with if they okay. on the roof wrong. Right. You no. Know, the it okay. passing that's totally separate. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And, and the roofing, yeah, they, the roofing company is usually give you a, a, a very, very detailed on, on how solar has to go up on the roof on the warranty. Who, who supervises the panels going up on the roof? Who's like the company? Who, who's doing it? No, I um, no, JD uh, Solar. The company's called JD who, Solar Company. Well, who engaged with them? Is it somebody from the town? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it was Bill Craddy and the, the energy commit, whatever they're called, the energy commission. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of missteps along the way with this whole project. <laughs> well, I was sent up there two or three times to stop them. Right. Uh, for different things. Um, the, and there's no, the, to, to our knowledge, right, Bob, there's been no, they also did the field house and Johnson. And I don't think there's been any issues there. No, ma'am. It's Not only at, at Rockwell. So Correct. my question with that, that would be, is the young developer's installation process inadequate or faulty? And then the solar guys up there walking around just made a bunch of th problems worse. Which well, I, there's just, the reason I would a guessing the reason game. I, the reason I would disagree with that is you have the John Mansfield report from April accepting the roof. There's no reason John Mansell would accept, uh, you know, inferior work from one of their installers. It's just not the way they work. Um, so I would say no. I, I would say no. You 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 had a roof that it it was tight. There's some issues that have now come up. We just have to address them. We have to get access to it. it hey Jim, I, you know I'm not you know trying to start anything, but I did have a leak. I had one. I, leak I, doc I documented on the I documented on the drawing and on the timeline. You had you had two leaks. You had a, a leak at the uh, with the condensate pump. You had a leak in that room 112, which looks like it's related to a mechanical uh, fan on the roof that may need a cover on it. We'll we'll chase that out. And then we had a leak in the cafeteria, which was from the ductwork separating. You also had a leak in the gym area, which it's debatable whether that was roof or that was the solar panel install going through the wall. Well, we sent we sent Youngs out there and they patched it. And I, as far as I know, you haven't had any issues with that since. No, Jim. But the, the only one that I had prior to them bringing any equipment up on the roof was the one over the stage, that area there. It was yep. a small, it wasn't Absol Absolutely. Room. And that's, Young's went out there and patched that. Absolutely. Okay. But, and, and I told that to the solar company people um, that we only had one, um, but that was the same time they were loading getting ready there were staging equipment up there yeah that was it was actually I, after they started on 726 i guess they hadn't have approval until august but that was actually after they had started on 726 we got that alert about the leak young's went out there they did fix it though okay so so the timeline that was provided by rizzo um we, you know that's part of the report that jim had or jim had up earlier that jim sent um, together in a little more of a. I had sent over a clear one to Dr. Carver. I didn't share that with anyone else. Um, I did. So oh, okay. I, I, yeah, it's on the. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I had sent it to Gerald and Jim. Okay. Yeah, right. I just and extracted the email and shared it as a document here. So, okay. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't, I don't think it was sent out to all of us in advance, but it's on the shared drive. Or was it? It was sent right. to me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that went out with everything else. And so. So we know that the roof has to be fixed. That's yeah, clear. It does. And, and as Jim said, <laughs> as Jim says, we need to do it very soon. Right. Too cold to, to be able to have whatever repairs are done be effective. 
So, and Jim, what did you say? Is, have you set something up to get them out there to look at stuff or are they not, is it gonna be everybody together or is it gonna be? Yeah, I, I think it's important that it's both. What, but my first tact would be to have a conversation with John Mansville directly about maintaining this warranty and uh, you know reiterating what they're looking for to be done as far as paperwork by the solar company. Then it would be if, if you give us who the contact is for the solar company or whoever is dealing with them for the town, we can set up a meeting to bring them out, um, you know, because again, we panels are going to have to be removed so you can get to these areas, and that's where the roofer and the and the solar company would have to work together to identify. Okay, how far into the panel area do you have to get? So, Jim, Jim a quick question, Jim. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Carve. Uh, you mentioned that you saw some ductwork that got stepped on. Is, will that yeah, now have to be repaired as well? No, it it doesn't. It looks like all they did, Bob, it was it, it pulled. It's a a joint between the 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 covering of the ductwork and the the uh, CMU wall. It looks like it just got pulled away. So that's what Young reapplied. Uh, and as long as nobody's stepping on it, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Jim, I sent you the I, I forwarded you the email. Uh, I think that Man Damon is the person that's coordinating it for the solar, whatever it's called. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay. I just, I literally just forwarded it to you. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Damon Weiss. It seems like a, a lot the, of, go ahead. Do you need the whoever coordinated for the town involved in this? I don't think so, Bob, because Bill Crotty doesn't, he's not on the ground, right? With No, with the, no, but there's, um, there, there is a gentleman that comes out with JD Solar um, who, um, he, he, in the beginning, he looked like he was going to be the point of contact, uh, but then I haven't seen him. He, Every email I have from him on this topic is from Damon Weiss. Okay. And I, I have, I have that. many emails about it. And so there were emails that were forwarded to also to me and Gerilyn, Damon Weiss's name is on it. Right. Was, went to some people and not other people. And so I think it's a little confusing to me at least as to who got what email when or if at all so um so in, in speaking with john's manville um jim you said you're going to then have them talk to the solar people or have the solar to john's manville to make sure that that the solar people get that paperwork and inspections or whatever else has to happen in place I guess what I want to find out directly from John Mansell is to what standard are they going to hold? Because everything John Mansell needed the solar company to do is impossible for them to do now. So it's going to be a question of, okay, this is the reality of where we are. What do you need now in order for the town of Bethel to maintain their warranty on this roof? Right. And you know, so far, every indication I'm getting from John Mansell is that they're being reasonable, um, but I, we can't achieve what they had asked for back in April. It's, it's just, it's not physically possible. So we're not in the same situation at Johnson with leaks, but are we in the same situation at Johnson with the manufacturer or the distributor, manufacturer, installer, not the installer, but the whoever supplied the materials to Johnson and whatever paperwork needed to be done there to maintain the warranty? Yes. So who's going to take care of getting all that coordinated? Same, same thing. We'll have a, a conversation directly and see where do we go from here. This is the reality of where we are. What do you need? And and we'll we'll report back to you. We'll let you know what that is. Right. Because the Johnson's not John's Manville. It's somebody. Certainty. Certainty, no. I believe it is. Yeah. I can't remember which. Okay. So same kind of thing will have to happen, but. In a way, it has to happen more quickly at Rockwell so we can get repairs done before the really, really cold, constant cold weather sets in. Correct. Okay. Um, and I, I just checked my email again, uh, Jim. All the all the correspondence is from that Damon gentleman. Okay. And then, Jim, if you have any trouble with the JD Solar folks, like let me yes, or Bob or Dr. Carver know, we can see if some, whoever the, the main town person is can jump on them. Sure, okay. Just so you know, I'm not the town guy on the on the site. Right. Okay, I, so, because Correct. that got confusing in the beginning. Right. 
And, but you could let, you know, if he lets, I don't know, the three of us, Dr. Carver, Bob, and me know, we'll point yeah. him they sure. point in the right direction to find out um, who from the town can then jump on these solar people to make sure things get done in a timely fashion. So who will supervise when they come back and fix it? That's that's the sixty-four thousand dollar question. So um, I I asked Matt that, <laughs> and um, he told me that Eric he he's, he was going to work with Eric uh, Swenson from the the director of public works. Yeah. Somebody through his department to do that. It's not fair to Rizzo to have to carry it, right? We got we got quite a bit that looks like it has to be done. It's not part of their scope. It wasn't part of our construction project. Right. And Rizzo shouldn't get stuck with it. You know, no. Right? Not any part but, of their scope. But some of, someone from Rizzo may want to be present to make sure that the parts that were sort yep. of Nancy, and all solar panels were not part of the project. No, they I'm not saying there, but they should get paid for it. Right, but the roof itself was supervised by Rizzo. Right. So at but some Nancy, point, Nancy, we don't we don't mind cooperating, but the roof was signed off in April. You know, right. contract wise, we gave what was supposed to be given there. We're not making an issue of being involved in this and trying to help resolve it. But the the reality is the, the solar company did not follow what they were told back in May to do. Correct. So, uh, again, we'll, we'll help coordinate as best we can and, and be involved as much as we can. Right, but if like Young Developers comes out to do some work, you would wanna know about it, you would wanna be a part of it somehow and coordinate it and, and make sure it's done. If they have to do some stuff, make sure it's done properly, correct? Or not? If you're, if you're talking roof warranties, no, we wouldn't be involved in that. Uh, you know, the only reason we're involved in this is because you have a situation. There's no other way to solve this. I need to put two people together who can control the outcome and, and they've got to solve it. Right. Okay. So Wait. Jim, if you can't reach the gentleman or he's not responsive, let me know and I'll, I'll work with Matt to make sure it happens. Okay, fair enough. And so are we, are we saying that we would have repairs done by young developer or are we saying that we're gonna throw the, um, if repairs have to be done, will they be done by the company and whoever they bring in to do it? Wouldn't that mess up the warranty? Yeah. No, the repairs have to be done by young developers because right. the okay. roof is still under their warranty. So right. that's right. the only reason that we have to so coordinating is to facilitate that part of it. But that's also right. the reason why they can't, there is, the warranty is held by the, by, the, by the district, by the town now. Right. So really that contractual relationship is no longer through Rizzo. So then that, that's why we're saying that it's going to go through public works. Somebody from public works is going to have to supervise that part. Right. So we're just going to have to communicate to public works when that's going to happen. But I, I think we first thing is Jim needs to get find out, get them together. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Just want to make sure that it's all getting covered and everybody knows what part they're supposed to take care of. Jim, when what is your timeline for trying to work I'll on this? Get, I'll get I'll get on that tomorrow morning. Okay, and if you run into any difficulty, just call me. I will. And then we've got to tag um, Eric at Public Works to make sure that it's on his radar. I can email him tomorrow and let him know that um, he'll be hearing from somebody. Okay. And that. Hopefully Matt and, and putting Eric, saying that Eric's going to be the one kind of keeping track of that. Um, Matt told Eric too, so it's not a surprise. I believe he did. Okay, good. And then um, Jim, going back to the plate slope drainage, 
the letter that was sent by has been given to um, priority. So it's two players, right? You've got earth movers, they established the slope. They right. have the under drain work that, that Joe's concerned about. Uh, you know, we went over it with them again. They're going to proceed under protest. They're going to get looked to pay, get paid as the stuff comes up that it's been installed per contract. Um, you know, but we're going to do what's stated in the letter. Okay. Good. And then has anybody else kind of gone up around the area, just basically looking at um, <clears throat> Just the, the grass and the grass growing and the reseeding that has been done. And is it improving? Is it the same? Is it worse? Is it better? Is it? Well, I, saw I, it. I, I could tell you that there's very little washout, which is great on the Johnson yeah. side, very little. And even on that Rockwell side of that hill, very little. And we've had some horrendous storms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it looked pretty good there. And it's. Good. You know, yeah, I drove through and saw some improvements and, and a few bare spots here and there, but um, I know there was more seating that was done after I went driving through. So, um, good. So, is there anything else on Rockwell that is kind of outstanding or we're waiting for? We're yeah, Bob's going to check into the dumpster gate to find out whether something was going on with that. Um, and then a lot of stuff's getting done on Thursday because it's and schools are closed. So good. I just have one thing still pending at Johnson, and I spoke with the with uh, Lucido Electric, and he he had issues with trying to get an excavator over there to open up uh, for that wire to the scoreboard, and I and I told him that this has to get done uh, before the ground freezes, and. He wanted, well, what happened is one of the problems was the stakes were pulled up. So they don't know exactly where the pipe goes underneath. I was able to identify one side of it. And then looking at the drawing that, um, that I believe uh, Joe gave us, it showed it right on there. So I, I just have to, he's gonna have to probe a little bit to find the other end of that pipe. But I, I expressed to him that this has got to get done because this is a, a, a pending quote out there. So mm -hmm. I stressed the urgency to him today. So Lucido's bringing in their own digging person to do it? Is that what you're saying? That was, or? Part, of the, that was part of the quote. Okay. That he was going to have a small little ditch wig, which open it up and to identify where that pipe is. And then from that point, do their channel all the way around the, the backstop. And they're amenable to getting it done before it he I, I made it painfully clear to him today. Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> Anything else with Rockwell? Either school? Good. Budget review. Yep, we'll take a quick look at the um, at the tracking budget, starting with Johnson. We're we're clearly getting close to the end. Um, you can see on on this, we're 94% build out on the project with about 500 and expected, you know, just over $500,000 worth of um, invoices and requisitions remaining. Still holding the same um, contingency that we had previously, a little over 1.3 million. At Rockwell, um, again, because there's no contingency left, the percentages are a little higher, but um, still looking at billing out probably a remaining $500,000 expected at Rockwell, and we're still just short of $600,000 um, in the red on the contingency there. This is previous to the requisition that we'll look at tonight. So uh, combined again, combined, um, Combined uh, liability and remaining contingency were a little over $650,000 remaining on the combined two projects. If all of this, um, if all of these expected additional costs are paid out, I did adjust this. Uh, we, last week we talked about the personal 
the personnel, Scissor Lift, we had been carrying 10,000. That proved to be too low for the quote that Bob was able to provide. So um, I adjusted that here, and a little bit later on in the meeting, we'll we'll look at that quote and um, ask the the building committee to approve going ahead with that purchase. But the only other things remaining are some projected uh, additional bond costs based on increases in the project cost for change orders over the life of the project, and then the um, the additional services that are still under discussion um, for uh, both Perkins Eastman and, and Riz House. But other than that, everything else is pretty much staying stable. We're what we are currently projected to be well under. Well, what, we're projected to be under the referendum approved budget on the combined schools and um, they have a, a projected remaining uh, contingency at the end of about $650,000. So um, Terry wanted me to bring up, um, and I know Geraldine, you know this, um, that we did the, we did a state filing. Um, our, I did, Terry and Geraldine prepared it and I actually filed it. Um, the Johnson one went through um, but we had to reduce the amount that we actually filed for um, because we're getting close to that 11% hold aside. And, um, and then the Rockwell one did not go through at all. So we could not submit it. And the reason is, is because we're so close to the end of the project, we have to submit a final. Um, and, um, and that means, I think, and Geraldine, you probably could expand this better than I can, that we would have to submit all the bills um, for right. that. And, um, and I, I believe Terry and Geraldine had a goal of doing that by December 31st. I don't know if that's realistic, um, but that, that was the goal that so anything that was outstanding related to the project that need to be paid had, would have to be resolved before then. Right? Yeah, that was, that, yeah that's absolutely true. Um, so the town has received all the reimbursement money that they can possibly request until the final audit. And um, and yes, the target was the end of the calendar year, obviously. The only things that are outstanding really are, would be final applications for payment from Rizzo. So, um, you'll, and you'll see when we go, when we look at today's application for payment, there is, there is not a lot of money left. It is, on each project, it's primarily re, uh, retainage from certain subcontractors. Obviously, the work is, is complete. Um, and, and just all we need is for Rizzo to get those invoices in so that they can create a final you know, request for payment and, and that can be processed. So I think the, the, the impetus is really on, on Rizzo to get those invoices in from the subcontractors so that we can um, so that we have a final accounting of where the money went. Because there really aren't well, any change orders. There's nothing out there that's really on the um, discretionary, I would say, on the town side. We just need to pay for what what is already under contract. <clears throat> so just to throw something in there that we probably don't want to look at or whatever but if this whole landscape thing gets resolved i can see us moving forward if it does not and we have to wait till spring what does that do well obviously we'd prefer not to keep the contracts open for that outstanding work so i think we need to wait we need um we need to hear from jim and his team on what the what what the status of the discussions with earth movers and priority are where that lands when it, when is the work going to be what is the plan to remediate the, the, the deficiencies that we think we have now if the if the work if there is work to be done and it can't be done till spring, then I think we will have to strategize ways to close out the current contract and and hold some other contractual arrangement or pot of money um, to resolve that in the spring. Because if we hold the, this entire contract out, if if we hold all well, let me stop. Let me first of all, we would hope that we could close out Johnson because we don't have any outstanding um, issues there. And they're two separate projects, so we would proceed with Johnson towards final application for payment and final um, filings with the state. If we, if there's, if there are remaining issues at Rockwell, we will have to strategize how to handle that 
and weigh the, the, ban the difference between keeping the entire contract open until the work is resolved in the spring or somehow coming to an alternative contractual arrangement whereby we can close the current contract and move forward on the state audit, the state, you know, the state final application and the state audit, and then holding some sort of contract money or bond out separately for any site work that couldn't um, happen until the spring. But I think we're, we need a little bit more information before we, we ask the building committee to endorse that. Can I ask, Geraldine, is the, um, if, if there were any uh, potential issues that have to be remediated in the spring, would that be something we'd hit file on that would be reimbursable? If it was part of the original contract. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the answer there is yes, but the, the second part of that answer is what we're looking is what we're looking for is for the contractors, the subcontractors to fulfill their original obligation. And so ideally it wouldn't cost any more money to the project because that work has already been paid for but really that that's a discussion and a negotiation i think that is that is yet to be finalized because we're still back and forth between you know is is the work on that slope has it to date we don't think it's been provided according to the contract documents but but that's sort of part of the part of the conversation you know so will we know that soon Uh, Jim, I'm I'm thinking that you're having that those conversations. You you, you think you have a, you've had a conversation with Earth Movers, and now you need to talk to Priority again about it and come to some conclusion on responsibility and and timing and stuff. Right. So that'll happen on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions on budget, cash flow analysis, et cetera? No. So um, next bullet on our agenda is a professional service, additional services request. And there's, there's continuation going on, is what I can say. Um, between, so Perkins Eastman and town attorneys, and then between Rizzo and Town Attorney. And I asked Matt Knickerbocker and CC Attorney to make sure that any, um, anything that's either put forward or um, any amounts of money, et cetera, that are put out there that, that we as the Public Site and Building Commission have some input and some say in, um, in where that goes, amounts and et cetera. Because we've had ongoing discussions for, you know, with, for almost with Perkins Eastman for more than a year about time spent, et cetera. And so to me, it seems like we should have some input from, from the commission and from, you know, both Perkins Eastman and Rizzo on if there are amounts that are going to be discussed or agreed upon, um, that there's a basis for that. You know, is it about an hourly amount or time spent or et cetera, which I think we've had um, a good amount of information given to us by both Rizzo and by Perkins Eastman. So to me, it would make most sense that it's not just a, a number kind of pulled out of thin air, but that it has a uh, basis to it as far as uh, how it relates to the project. So I asked to make sure that we get that, that kind of input and was told that certainly would be part of the discussion and decision-making in this. Hopefully it'll come up soon. So I don't know if anybody else has any either questions on it or input on it. Um. I'm good. I think we just have to wait it out a little bit more. Get well, it. yeah. And it's kind of, kind of like we're not just waiting, waiting. It's yeah. you know, discussion yeah. going back and forth, et cetera. Making sure that that um, all the information that's necessary to make that decision is is that both parties agree on and, and we have all that information. Yep. Um, so 
invoice invoices and such. So is this where we might want to talk about the, um, the personnel lift that Bob's going to get and drive here from Pennsylvania? <laughs> He's going to get on it and drive it over here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, Bob did, man did um, forward a quote on a lift. <clears throat> And the, the total cost, including the shipping, is twelve thousand nine hundred dollars. We had previously just tossed around a number of ten, but um, this is a real quote now. Uh, and this is the request to approve the uh, the quote and the expenditure, and then uh, presumably shortly after receiving the list, we'll we'll have an invoice to review and approve as well. So I'm, what I'm going to do is make a motion. And then we can ask Bob questions or discuss it later. So I'll make a motion that we approve um, the amount, the quote that Bob received on this um, genie lift, the amount of $12,900, including shipping. Uh, shipping separate. Well, the 12900 12, is the shipping. So it's, it's 11, so yep. 950, right? So that's 12 nine includes shipping. So okay. um, I need a second so we can discuss I'll second it. That. I'll second that. Yep, we got a second from Roy. Um, so I think Bob, the last meeting talked about new one, the cost of new ones. Um, you know, we all kind of ideas of either used or be on the state contract list. So Bob's done a bunch of research and come up with their for us and um, if I can just add in this, yeah, yeah, the a new one goes for about thirty thousand dollars, and as, if you'll wow. scroll down, you'll see that this is a thirty-nine footer, and that's what I need for the gym at Johnson. Uh, it's a working height mm -hmm. of thirty-nine feet. Now, um, what Genie that this is that dealership there? What they told me is that the wait time for a brand new one is will be well over a year. And they said that um, what they have done with some of these older ones, which this one here is a used one, they recertify it through Genie uh, because they're a dealership. So this has been refurbished and uh, ready to go. So it'll have some sort of like warranty and like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it does have outriggers that go out and. Yeah, well, a 39 footer has, um, has a certain type of outriggers. And if you notice the gray rubber tires, that is for gym floors. And obviously it'll be used on gyms. Right, so you won't have to put something down on the floor in order to drive it in there to change the lights or any of that. Not with those soft rubber tires, no. Uh -huh. You have a place? I I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. you, you froze. Yeah, you have a place to store it? It'll be stored at Johnson. Oh, so you'll use it mostly there or can you use it in the other schools? No, I could definitely use it in the other schools. And what the secondary thing I'm going to be looking for, and I asked this company if they had it, is a small trailer. Uh, and that's, that's, those are just a few hundred dollars, but um, I, I, I just need this first. Yeah. We're worried about getting it to other schools or right. actually the town yeah. will be able to use it too as well for right. this gym here and municipal center, et cetera. Yeah, so, it'll be a it'll be a good town asset. Can it can it be used like the media center where there's a big high, or can it drive through doors and things like that? Is yeah, it? it the the narrowness of this uh, will allow you to go through a standard width door. Okay, great. Uh, and that's why it has the outriggers. They're all folded in, so when they mm -hmm. go through the door and then you start to bring it up, then the outriggers come out. Great. Does anybody have? Comments for Bob or on this? Nope. Does this go against the school project or against school budget or the town it's, budget? So we're we're considering this because um, Bob had asked about it a, lot, a long time ago, more than a year ago, since he realized he was going to need something to be able to do maintenance, more so at Johnson, but somewhat at Rockwell. Um, and if there was something left in the project, could we possibly 
um, provide this so that it could be so come out of the project. Yes, which is why Geraldine's been carrying it on the cash flow analysis sheet for all this time. So this is a Zamboni for a gym. Not necessarily. It's for it's no. It's not necessarily. And then during the summertime, well, see, every summer I rent two or three of these for three hundred dollars a shot to do what we do is we blow all the dust down the upper upper rafters and then we clean the ducts and then we you know hang banners we change light bulbs things of that nature and it, it, it's getting expensive to, uh, to keep renting one and uh so now we'll have one that both us and the town could use because they have a gym here as, at the municipal center as well dave it's also for like the the library like you know the media center those highlights so not just the gym. Yeah. It's a safe working platform. Right. Yeah, and it is it is something that we, you know, discussed quite a long time ago and again decided to wait towards the end of the project to see what kind of um, money was left in contingency in order to um, responsibly purchase something like this for use. And this and this particular vendor is holding it for 30 days as as I wrote on there because he says as soon as they get them and they get refurbished, they're, they're gone. Yeah. So, Geraldine, you, you've been carrying 18,000 uh, in no, the- I, uh, So, I, I had been carrying 10,000. Yeah. I upped it last week. Last, after we talked about it last month, I, I upped it to 18,000. We're actually down at 12.9 at this point. So, but all along we had been carrying 10,000 for this. So this is just a small increase in what we had been carrying. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, Bob has enough to get a trailer uh, for it because I do think it will be very useful to be able to move it around. So. Certainly there's room in the budget to do that as well. Yeah. Um, so I was actually looking at Home, Home Depot had them. Or I'm sorry, Lowe's has them out in the yard. They have are, the, they heavy, the, are they heavy enough, Bob? Because that's a pretty heavy unit. So. Yeah, no, I have I, that little research I have to do on that. Yeah, because yeah. I'd prefer to keep a couple extra thousand dollars for Bob for a trailer. So at least this way he can, uh, that would still be in the budget to pick up a trailer too. Yep, when there's plenty left in contingency right now, so if we need to look yep. at that. If we can leave, if we, probably if we can leave that in, Bob can do his research, and then we can, you know, keep keep that same amount in. And see, what the nice thing about okay. this is, during the summer, I could use this to clean the windows too on the outside. Oh yeah, you don't because find because very useful. So. Oh yeah, because it's 39 feet working height. That's that's pretty yep. good. That's real good. Okay, so anything oh. else? Any other questions on this? So, oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Does anybody abstain? Thank you. So, um, Thank you. Bob, I don't know what you have to do now. If it's been approved, do you just go ahead with it? or? Well, I got to speak with Terry. Uh, we may have to put a Board of Ed PO on it and then get reimbursed later. Um, I have to speak to him on that one. Okay. All right. The rest of the invoices, not a lot. We have this invoice plus uh, the payment applications from plus, Rizzo. Right. I might as well. This is quick and easy. This is the, yep. um, the rework done by Sunburst Landscaping over at Johnson after the, um, the storm in September. Previously approved as a quote. Now this is the invoice. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we approve Sunburst Landscaping invoice number 15. 810 in the amount of $1,450 for um, work that had to be repaired due to erosion um, at Johnson, right? Johnson? I'll second that. Bob seconds it. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, was this Johnson or was it Rockwell? It was John Johnson. Johnson. That's the Johnson part. Except to write that on there. Okay. 
and then applications for payment. So I'll make a motion that we approve Rizzo application for payment number 32 for Johnson in the amount of $162,417.08. I second that. Olson seconds. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Done. And then Rockwell. I'll make a motion that we approve Rizzo application for payment number 32 for Rockwell School, in the amount of um, $90,984.81. Okay. Second that. David, David Olson seconds. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Done. I didn't ask if anybody had any questions, but I figured if you did, you'd jump in. Um, so that's it for invoices this time, right? And I don't think we have anything else. Does anybody have any other questions, any input they need to give, et cetera? We're done in record time. <laughs> Setting a new. No, we missed it by four minutes. <laughs> oh, we missed it by four. You've been keeping track, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. Okay, so um, I I think we need to go ahead and have our meeting um, and have school project be part of the meeting. Uh, our next meeting, which would be for Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. Okay. I think it's after. No, I think it's before. Oh, it's the 23rd. Yeah. Ew. Is that a problem for anybody? You. Okay. Hmm. So, anybody else? I don't know. I was told that computer travels nicely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think I have any reception in Reno. So. <laughs> oh. Um, so should we consider changing the meeting? Well, not on my account. I mean, obviously the decision-making body is if you'll all be there, it's just going to be a matter of a report from Rizzo on uh, an update on things like the roofing and the slope at, at Rockwell. I'm, I don't even know that there'll be any action taken necessarily from the project side at that point. Okay. So are you gone all week? Is that what you're... I am gone all week. Okay. I've been, yeah, gone more than a week, so yeah. Well, and we can, I guess we can sort of check in and see like the week before if there, there's big... I don't know, things happening and things that need to have discussion or maybe we push it back and have it on 30th. Or are you still going then? No, I'm, I'll be back on the 30th. So I would be available on the 30th. So that's certainly, you know, that works okay. for me. But certainly, Nancy, you and I can, can chat before, you know, that Friday right. before. Yeah. Um, and see where things are at, kind of bring you up to speed on, on what might need to be um, acted on at the meeting. It, it's up to you. Yeah. All right. So if there's some big glaring things that we need to deal with, maybe we wait. And if there's not, then we go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So um, thank you, Gerilyn, Joe, John, and Bob. Everybody else got to stick around for a few minutes, like usual. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, John. Hi, John. So, um, police station. The um, last meeting I told you about, and I tried to show you, which I wasn't very successful with, um, video 
but then I emailed it to everyone that uh, Chief Hugner had sent with some leaks that came during the last big rainstorm. Um, there were very few, which was, the interesting thing was that, that those didn't show up when we had the heavy rain from Storm Ida, but up from, it was like a week, well, two weeks ago, I think we had a heavy rain and they showed up at that point. Fast improvement still, so just a few wet spots. And Downs came out, I mean, it, when they said they were gonna organize coming out, I figured it would take them a little while to get it scheduled, but they said, oh, we're coming on, I think they emailed me on Friday and said, we'll be there Monday morning. Boom, they were there Monday morning. So it didn't give us much time to get prepared to have somebody out there. Um, so they were there and did a bunch of things. And I can, they sent me an email. This is what we did. They sent it to me on election day when I was working all day. Um, so I threw it, I didn't send it, I didn't forward it, but I did put it, Kathy, if you can make me co-host, I might be able to figure out the screen share thing. So, oops. It's gonna take me a minute or two. I just took the email and dumped it into like a document. And I just have to find it somehow. And get to my documents. So they did a bunch of work and they, they must have, um, They must have also kind of had a chat with um, Brian Humes because in the email he then replied, I agree with everything you did, it's just as we su suspected. So here's the report coming up on the screen. But I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see it or no? Where'd everybody go? We can't see anything. Can't see it. All right, let me try it again to screen share. Carolyn does this. this whole, here it is. Um, is it? Now you see it. Now you see it. Now you don't. don't right? You see it? See. Yeah. See it. Okay. Yeah. So. Using um, photo and videos, they found one of the things did was the furnace, the temporary furnace um, vents out. That's not block walls, just like some plywood and caulked, and it does have the coating on it, but it's not, you know, it around. It's not perfect, so they um, they added some caulk there. It'll be much more. Um, once the block is all infilled, once they put the HVAC system in and, and the other um, exhaust duct work and stuff like that that needs to go, and then the block is all put around that, it'll be um, it'll be much more waterproof. And so then they found a void in split, split face block, blocked that, and then they found some areas on the roof that they um, found some areas they needed to seal and caulk, which they did. And this whole thing with the noise transmission here, where they talked about a gap between the, the room outside the range and, and the range was creating a negative air pressure thing. They sealed that up and um, the basic sort of conclusion now is that the next time it rains really hard, we've got to check it out and see um, if we're still in good shape with that. And then the whole thing with the, the last part, the vent stacks, uh, that was something that a, they, with building, they went to building maintenance, the police department went to building maintenance and said, we keep having this periodic kind of like methane gas sewer smell in the building. And the, they sent a picture with the vent stacks as they were installed and didn't think they were tall enough. And I guess they were made taller and everything is but required by code. So we're gonna have to I'm gonna have to check with the 
police department to find out if that's still an issue. So I, th I think where we are right now is um, with this, with the whole firing range, we're gonna have to keep an eye, as I said, next time we have a rainstorm, which as Dr. Carver has said, we've had a lot of rainstorms, but that doesn't stop us if we, as we talked at our last meeting from um, continuing to go move forward with trying to make some plans to have everything in place so that once we know um, that it's, we're ready to go, we can go out to bid. So I asked um, Matt Knickerbocker if he was going to consider adding one or two people to the commission from the either the police department or some, you know I would hope L Lieutenant Libertini because you spent the most time on um, getting things planned out for the range because that would be I think for me it would be helpful to me to have some even two people maybe. Um, Lieutenant Durkin can get, can rejoin us for a period of time while we're getting this completed. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Nancy. They they'd be both very helpful. Yeah, because I know there's some plans that they have, etc. But you know, we, we need to be able to, to to work with them on that and and get the information out to put it out to bid. So, so Matt said he was going to talk to Chief Pugner and see you know who he would suggest and um, put that out there, the Board of Selectmen then would appoint those people to become, you know, they would, we would have them come to meetings and, or even even have a, uh, a sit down meeting with whoever might need to be there and look at the plans and, and see what else we need to do to come up with making sure we have complete documents ready to go out if we're gonna put something out to bid. I agree. So that's kind of where we are with the police station right now. Um, the municipal center renovations, last I heard, actually I had a conversation with um, Brad Hearing from finance because they were looking at, um, the town was looking at um, using this, and we had talked about this before, this Gordian group group that, that creates a situation where the project kind of runs through state contract lists. Yep. And that so then you, know, you get these fixed prices that are on the state contract lists. So you don't end up having to, I don't believe you end up putting anything out to bid. And I just wanted to make sure that if that's the route that the town goes in that everything that's needed for that project is covered. I didn't want to have any gaps. And if, um, so, so I, they were trying to get more information together from this Gordian group to come up with some sort of a total cost for the project. So here's the plans we have, which, you know, we know we have plans completed for not just the locker room area, but the GP room lobby. And, um, it's, it's like, like I, I didn't want them to just start picking one from column A, one from column B off the state contract list to get going without a, a somewhat kind of a final idea of what the total cost of the projects. Because somehow I think we have to do, even though this is grant money that's being used, it's the ARPA grant, um, we still have some sort of idea of a budget and a cost. So that seems to happening um, sort of outside of us, right? I'm not sure if we then end up being a part of it or, or what the um, what the next steps are. So I'm going to have to check. Actually, I'll check with Brad and Eileen to find out okay. and where, we're, where we are with that because it would be a, like John Menti has said it would be a perfect winner project, but if it's going to be a winner project, it ought to be out to bid right now. So, yep. All right. So, any other questions on observations, et cetera, on any either police station or municipal center? I'm going to take the screen share thing down. So, Let's all back here. Jen 
Menti's asleep. He's not going to be able to do what he usually does. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. So, oh, my turn? <laughs> yes. What a bunch of good looking people here, <laughs> including you, John Perna. Thank make you. a motion we adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Second. Second from Dave Olson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. So, Kathy, I will run that stuff over in the morning so that you can. Um... Oh, you're frozen, Kathy. That's good.